Correct. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be. We got some folks from Tulsa that just said hi, Bird Pool Services. My name is Nikki Acosta, Director of Marketing at Skimmer, and I am joined today by Bryce Sarine. Bryce, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm the owner of Beyond Pool Cleaning and uh, Skimmer Ambassador. So um, I'm here to help people kind of navigate how I use Skimmer, but I am I, I run my own company and uh, you know we, we take care of several hundred customers. So uh, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about is is from experience. So and Bryce is also the moderator of the Arizona Pool uh, Text Group with tw I think 2,900 members now as well. Yep. So yep. pretty tuned in to what's happening out there. All right. So what are we going to cover today? We've got a pretty packed agenda, and we definitely want to leave time for some Q&A at the end. But we are going to share with you why it's a really good time to raise your prices, especially if you haven't done so recently. Uh, we're going to give you some tips on how to figure out what the right rates might be for your customers. We're going to go through our calculator, which we are going to provide to you via email after uh, the webinar is over, and how to communicate price increases uh, to your customers. And then we'll follow that up with a Q&A. And so before we begin, I'm going to run a quick poll here. This is totally anonymous, so feel free to be honest. When was the last time you did a service rate increase? And what was the percentage amount of your last increase? And we'll give you all a few seconds to answer. Still have a ton coming through, so I'll just wait a few more seconds here. All right, so let's look at our results here. Pretty Can interesting. See those? Yep. Seems like most people have done price increases in the last year, but the ones I'm really interested in are the people who've never increased their rates. You know, surprising high number, and I'd love to help those people fix it up. So, and looking at the percentage amount of your last rate increase, almost a split amount between 10% or less or 11 to 20%. But we do have some folks that have done a rate increase that's more than 20% of their current rate as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Probably pretty scary, <laughs> but great that it worked out for them. Excellent. So let's get going. Why should you raise your prices? Why is it a good time to raise your rates now? Well, there are lots of reasons, ones that you're very familiar with, that chemical costs are up, labor costs are up. But profitability in the industry is down, and we'll take a look at that here in a second. Uh, last but not least, when we analyzed our skimmer user data, we found a ton of variability in what and in how pool service companies are charging out there. And so we'll dig into some of that data as well. So we have access to this report. It's the IBIS World Swimming Pool Cleaning Services Report. And uh, it breaks down the $7.8 billion pool services uh, industry. And within kind of that subset, they're looking at cleaning services, which makes up the largest share. They're looking at chemicals. They're looking at equipment cleaning and maintenance. And then they're looking at other services, niche services, uh, pool openings, pool closings, addition of lights, ladders, fixtures, waterfalls, fountains, that kind of thing. And when they did an analysis of this, they found that profitability is actually down uh, from a high in 2017 of 11.4%. That has slid down now. We've recovered a little bit uh, over the years, and we're now at, sitting at about 11.2 uh, in the swimming pool cleaning services industry. The good news is that over the next five years, 
the IBIS world folks believe that the industry is expected to expand uh, with industry revenue expected to increase at an annualized rate of 2% to a total of 8.6 billion in 2027. So there is uh, some good opportunity. As you all know, uh, the pandemic was a boom for the pool industry. And as we see those pools coming online, uh, that'll represent more opportunities for people like you. So what I wanted to share here was kind of data analysis. And what we did was we looked at uh, all of our service rates. And I'll share, I'll d dive into a couple cities for you, but we created a heat map. And what this heat map shows is areas where pool service rates are higher and areas in the green that you see there on the map that are a little bit lower. And so if you look at it nationally, you're going to see areas in California, Texas, Florida, and then a kind of a small pocket there in New York where we expect to find higher rates, Seattle as well. Uh, and if we dive into this a little bit more deeply, you will see, next slide, there we go. So this is, this is kind of a, a zoomed in view. And what we did is we took the average for all of the zip code uh, data that we have for every single zip code that we service. So there are over 8,900 zip codes, and these little pins on the map represent those specific zip codes, and literally hundreds of thousands of service locations. And so as we look at this data, what we're going to show you is the averages across each of those zip codes, knowing that service levels may vary, frequency may vary. So this is just kind of looking at raw data. We did remove some outliers, some data, what we think are data entry errors, and maybe some uh, niche folks that may service things like water parks. And then we looked at territories and states that accept the US dollar. So I'm gonna show you the same map kind of without the pins and kind of give you a bird's eye view of what service rates look like in Southern California. So the lowest zip code in this area, $78, that was the lowest service rate in Skimmer. The highest was 542. And so we're looking at a median here. We don't. We wanna be careful in giving averages because we don't want people to say, hey, I saw that the average for my area was this, why are you charging me more? Uh, the median for SoCal is $133. We did the same here for our next city, which is the Phoenix metro area. And Phoenix is interesting because we see a ton of variability even within zip codes as well. Uh, you can see the, the center of Phoenix with red dots there, but those yellow kind of uh, spattered dots and those green dots represent much lower rates than where the red dots are. And so our lowest zip code in this map region was $80. The highest zip code was 198 was the average. And so we're looking at a median across those zip codes of $117. We'll do the same thing for the DFW Metro. Lowest zip, $60. The highest zip code in the area, $319. And we're looking at a median of about $168. and Miami, Fort Lauderdale. And we again, we see a ton of variability here. We know that we have a lot of commercial clients here as well, but our lowest zip was 75. Our highest zip code was 347 for a median of 119. So zooming out, states with the lowest rates, we're gonna have Maine that had the lowest rate. Can anyone guess what that is? I'll just tell you it's $72.08. Uh, the highest rate is in Hawaii, and in Hawaii, the average service rate is $269.51. If we look at all of the zip codes, we're looking at a national average service rate of $139.87 with the national median rate of $125. So that's the midpoint between our highest and our lowest, as well as the national average. So in addition to pricing variability for just regular service, we also see a ton of variability in ancillary services uh, that many of you probably provide. And so this is actually from this week. There, This is from the Arizona Pool Text Group. And someone asked, what are you guys charging to drain a basic pool, spa combo, and startup chems? And you can see from the, the top left to the bottom right, there is a huge swing going from $190 to $485 and kind of everything in between. So that just goes to show that really there, there isn't a standard that in some cases, it sounds like the, the market may be able to support a higher rate than what you're charging. 
And it's also good to know that what your competitors are charging as well. Uh, but you know, a good way to figure that out would be to, to test, test and see what works. And, and Bryce will talk about pricing strategies here in a minute. So why raise prices? Number one, because your costs have increased. Uh, number two, because there's a ton of variability and you, and you may be able to increase your rates without the impact that you think you might have in terms of customer loss. And because you can work less and earn more. And that's something that we are really going to cover because it sounds crazy, but you can work less and earn more. And so I'm gonna turn it over here to Bryce on how to find those right rates and the impact on profit and how you can work less and earn more. Yeah. Um, thank you, Nikki, for running us through that stuff. Um, so what we're going to talk about, of course, you know, finding the right rates and the impact on profit. Um, if you guys know me, you know, you know, my, my favorite things are just, of course, you know, the Q&A actually talking about real life examples and just having that bottom line up front. And um, so let's let's talk first about what we're talking about when we say, you know, work less and make more money. Um, so this is a, a picture of the a link to the pricing calculator that you'll all receive after the fact. And I just kind of want to run you through it. We have two examples here. The, the first one is from an owner operator perspective. So this is someone who services uh, 100 unique locations. So, you know, they're making 100 stops a week and their current average rate is $100. Uh, that's this number right here. And they're going to change their rate to $120. So a $20 increase, a 20% increase. And we're assuming, you know, their typical profit margin. Now, this obviously is going to vary quite a bit from tech to tech, from, um, you know, business to business, especially when we talk about the different locations. So, you know, you will want to kind of put a, a number into this, but you imagine, you know, an 80% profit rate for someone who's both doing the billing and all the work, that that sounds pretty reasonable. But <laughs> um, we talk about the downside management. This, this is saying, what can you lose and maintain the same values? So this person who's servicing 100 pools could lose 17 of their accounts, 17%, and they would have the same revenue. Even more so, they could lose 20 of their pools, 20%, and have the same profit retention. And realistically, that's what this number runs into. It's called your upside potential. It's what retention do you really expect to have from your customers? An owner operator, someone who can call every single one of their customers who's in those yards every week, easily should be able to have a 97% retention rate, maybe even higher, even with this big of a price increase. And so this person, you know, doing this price increase and maintaining 97% of their customers could receive a total profit increase of $20,000 you know, $20, over the course of a year. Um, and these rates that I'm talking about are your monthly average rates. So that's, that's obviously pretty significant, but let's look at example number two. For those of you who are a multi-tech business, so this is kind of a smaller size monthly, monthly tech business. This is somebody who's running uh, 300 service locations and their current average rate would be $120. And they're doing actually a smaller increase to $135. So you can see the same numbers here, the 120 current rate, 300 service stops. The profit margin is obviously significantly reduced because they're paying somebody else to do the labor. So now you, you can see they're only ma maintaining a 30% profit rate, which is probably on the high side for a lot of, a lot of places. And now with those with those numbers, to maintain the same revenue, they can't lose all that many customers. It's still pretty big, you know, it's 10% of their customer base almost, um, you know, 267 customers that they would need to maintain. So, you know, they, they can only afford to lose 33 customers. Um, so that's not a huge difference. But looking at this next one, the target profit retention, a lot of people don't realize this, that when you increase your monthly average rate, your expenses don't increase. All of that money that you increase it pretty much drops straight to the bottom line. So your multi-tech companies can really do quite a bit with just a small increase. You can see they can lose nearly one third of their total business. You know, they can lose 88 customers and maintain the same level of their profit retention. 
and then of course your upside potential in general, you know, they, they probably would only lose 5% of their business. And so you're looking at an annual profit increase of $44,000, you know, almost $45,000 off of just a pretty small $15 increase. And again, these were monthly rates. I see quite a few questions j jumping in here. So now we gotta talk about finding the right rates when you're trying to do a price increase. The first step, and a lot of you that have been in business for a long time, you already have this, but defining your service level. Are you the company that is off offering top-notch service? Are you, you know, offering, to put it bluntly, I guess, you know, like a splash and dash if you're just trying to do the bare minimum? If you're doing chemicals only, you know, what, what is your service level? What are you offering your customers? And then you're going to shop your rates. So part of defining your service level is making sure you're correctly identifying your competition. When I was first starting out and I was an owner operator, all the time I was comparing my rates to a larger company and, you know, they were able to do the, the pool service. They were offering, you know, more, they were offering more expensive prices than I was. And, and I just didn't feel comfortable doing that because in my mind, I'm, I'm like, oh, I, I can't do what they do. Um, but that was completely wrong. Uh, I was probably offering a better service than they do because you're the owner, you're in the yard every time. I really should have high rates, but we find over and over again when we're looking at our data that the larger companies charge more than the owner operator, which is you know completely backwards from what I would expect it to be. Uh, so I feel like those owner operators are not identifying their competition correctly. They're they're seeing these large companies and they know what the rates they're getting. And they're not really looking at what the service level that they offer is comparatively. And then, um, you know, after you identify your competition, it's also important to price intelligently. You want to avoid pricing irregularities. Um, you might have multiple homes on one street, or you have a lot of people that are friends. If you if they have a pretty significant pricing irregularity between them and the pools are pretty similar, you're going to get that phone call. I've I've definitely done that mistake before. Um, and then make sure that you set your price so that you can have one increase, you know, at least be good for a full year. Um, you know, a good example of that is over the last year when we kept getting pricing changes from, from some of, some of our vendors, um, you know, out here, we had a lot of them with liquid chlorine or, um, you know, even some of the, the big vendors kept sending us price increases, you know, they're like, Hey, it's a 5% increase. And a few months later, Oh, we need to do another 5% increase. It can get to be pretty frustrating as I'm sure that you guys know. So we wanna make sure that we're not doing that to our customers as well. Um, so this is just some information that we're able to pull from, from Skimmer looking at average rates based on the entire market and how people charge. And something that I always find pretty, pretty surprising here is this number, these two numbers here. So a flat monthly including chemicals. So the people who are charging with all services included which is again, the majority of skimmer users, their average rate is actually lower than those who are charging plus chemicals, which means that all of the chemicals are being charged in addition to this rate. Um, I've, th I've put a lot of thought into why this might be, um, you know, I, as someone who I'm, I'm very much pro setting it up to be plus chemicals. And I, I you know, I said before we got started, Nikki, that <laughs> we could talk about that for the whole time. Um, and Nikki did put a link in for our podcast where we did talk about that for the whole time, but it's, it, it's like, well, why could this be that the people who are charging more also have a higher rate? And I think that it comes down to that the people who are charging plus chemicals are probably more in tune with, with the pricing sensitivity and they're doing pricing increases more regularly. So it's pretty, it's pretty interesting to look at. And I think that a lot of us can learn from that, that if by paying more attention to those rates, that we could actually be getting more money on our bottom line. Um, so let's talk about some of the different pricing strategies. Um, I know that you guys all wanna know the secret formula. And, uh, you know, unfortunately there's not a secret formula. You know, there's, there's this example, it's like the cost of parts times your markup in the percentage. So you know, plus the price of labor, plus additional costs. There's the formula that's the cost of parts plus labor, plus your additional costs, plus your one, you know, times your markup percent. There's the cost of parts plus the flat rate for the job type. But 
the reality is that no single formula fits every business or every situation. Uh, what, what I mean by that is that we, we might use one formula to figure out how much we're going to charge to install a, a large piece of equipment where we'll have a much lower margin percentage on that. Whereas when we put a floater in a pool, we might have something you know like a 100% margin on putting in something that's inexpensive. And you just can't use the same formulas for those. Um, and then communicating the increases to your customers, um, kind of changing gears here. So this is the actual process of making those increases and some of my personal suggestions, the, the do's and don'ts of how to communicate the increase. Um, number one, be professional. Uh, even if you're the owner op operator and you have a good relationship with your customers, it's still important to be professional in these messages. Understand that these messages are going to be shared with other people. Um, their people are going to talk about your price increases. It's it's not something that usually goes over real smoothly, and obviously they're going to they're going to weigh the value of your service with the price of your increase. Um, and any any little thing that you can do to be a little bit more professional will will help you tip that balance to make sure that you're maintaining those customer relationships. Um, I also say don't attach a price increase to a temporary situation like fuel costs. Um, this is something that was huge for us over the last year where our fuel prices were going up uh, and everyone was started wanting to, to do different things. They're like, we need to raise our prices to cover these, these crazy fuel costs. Um, but the downside of that is now our fuel costs start to go back down. And some of your customers will make that phone call back to you when they see that and they're like, and they'll ask you, they're like, hey, you raised my price because fuel costs were up and now they're down. So when are you going to lower my price? Um, you don't really want to have to have those conversations with your customer and have to adjust your your rates in these type of situations. So I prefer to attach them to things that are permanent. I, I like to attach my rate increases to things like our growing experience and our training and not to things that are impermanent like fuel costs, chemical costs, or you know even inflation. They're all things that can be temporary and can be adjusted over the course of years. Um, and do, you know, make sure you include a personal touch, talk to your customers about your business, talk to them about what you're doing and, and developing. And if, if you have a good relationship with your customer, if you're that owner operator, making a phone call can go a long way in, in maintaining those relationships. And then the last one, you know, don't be afraid to ask for what you're worth. Um, every time that I talk to people about price increases, they're so scared they they don't want to lose their business. That's and I remember doing my first price increase. That's how I felt. I was like, oh great, I'm going to do a price increase, and everyone's going to cancel service. I'm going to be out of business, and it's it's just could be such a such a scary and uh, such a scary thing that you know we're all afraid to to bring up and and to challenge ourselves to do that. Um, but please, you're not going to you're not going to lose that many. And with that calculator that we we designed was specifically when I was trying to explain this to people and talking about how much of your business you can afford to lose with a price increase, it's it's pretty astounding. And I don't need to harp on that for for too long. But please, don't be afraid. Let's let's go ahead and do a little bit of a you know your price increase, and you're going to be very surprised at how well it goes over. Um, we have a couple of examples of of messages. You're you're welcome to use these, but I would suggest that you don't, you know, write up something of your own, put it in your own voice. Um, but these are messages that you could actually send out with, using the broadcast tools on Skimmer, and I'll kind of show you how how to go about that, or you know, the, the little tricks that I use in a in a slide a couple from now. Uh, but this one is just talking to your customers, saying that you're wanting to. Uh, just do a, a, a pr price increase and that their new rate will be, you know, X, you know, your new rate will be here. So it's, it's pretty straightforward and you could definitely add more to it about what you're going to do, but you can see that it's trying to tie it to the, the team, the experience, or it's tying it to the experience the team has and not to anything temporary. Um, I'm not going to sit on this for a long time, but we are sending these slides out to you guys at the end so you can review it more. And the se second example, this is me again pushing pushing my motive of telling people to go to a plus chems model. So it's a similar wording as the last one, but talking about how you might be able to do that. 
Um, some some wording that I always really like is talking about avoiding subsidizing those who use their pools more regularly. Most of your customers, if you're in the Sun Belt, they don't even use their pools; they're just maintaining them. And um, that wording seems to really resonate with them. We're telling them that it's just paying for what your pool cost, and that's the truth too. A lot of times, if you're including chemicals in your rate, you're trying to figure out how much this pool is going to use when you're doing your quote. And you might overestimate, you might underestimate, but however that works out, there are pools out there that are subsidizing some of your other pools. So this this just makes it a little bit easier. And in my opinion, a little bit more fair for your customers as well. So how can Skimmer help you set this up? I use tags for everything. Uh, we've, we've talked about that in other webinars and we have a full list of uh, of the tags that I like to use. But the first one I'll say is, you know, this one, you can tag your rates into all of your customers and you can actually bulk edit tags. Um, you, you can do quite a bit with it that'll make it really easy for you whenever you make these price increases. But I would say go through, tag all of your customers at the rates that they are at right now. Um, and then when you're figuring out what your price increase is going to be, if you are doing just like a $10 increase, something of that measure, you're able to go to the broadcast emails filtered by tags. And now you're you're looking at all of your customers who have a current rate of, you know, for example, this $140. And you can send a message to them that says, your current rate of $140 is now going to be, you know, your, and then tell them what the new rate is. It includes, inc increases that personalization just a little bit. And, um, it makes your life a lot easier because you can send this message out to everyone at those two rate changes all at once. But go, go, go back to that one slide real quick. One other thing that we, we covered in another webinar that I thought was absolutely brilliant was you had, you had specified pump types there. And the reason behind that was because you wanted to send out a marketing email to get people with single speed pumps to upgrade to variable speed pumps. And so that's another good example of how you can use tags to quickly sort uh, and be able to send very specific messages, um, especially with regards to marketing or upgrades to a subset of customers very, very quickly. Um, people use tags for all kinds of things. Um, we've seen tags that have, you know, uh, bad dogs. <laughs> we've seen tags that uh, where, where people have... Uh, Put in when a customer is acquired or how they heard of that customer so that they could uh, very quickly you know target customers who they knew were referring people or were, were referred by somebody uh, to do special things for them so there's some really cool if you if you take the time to actually front load that and set that up there's some really cool things that that you could do with it later on yeah yeah absolutely you know there's um always so much you, you can do with information and the more information the better um, my tag list, even, even since then, has grown quite a bit, but you can see there's things like the year that it's acquired. Um, it just allows you to do some searches in the future where you can look at how many pools that you still have from you know, 2021 and how long they've been with you. All kinds of metrics that you'll be able to dig out of these in the future. So thanks for bringing that into attention there, Nikki. Um, for the Q&A, did you want to flag some questions or should we just start at the top? Yeah, we, we have uh, a ton. The first question is, is there a webinar on tags? Yes, there is. It's in our Skimmer Pro account. I popped, I believe I popped the, the link uh, to the webinar that we did before. It's in the same channel under Pro Content. And so if you want to kind of do a deep dive into tags, definitely check there. Yeah. Here's a good one. How do you price a weekly service versus a bi-weekly service? Yeah, Charlie, that's a great question. Um, so this is something that we experience mostly, I'd say in the Sun Belt where you're not winterizing your pools. So their, their service is going to maintain all year round. And some of our customers like to go to bi-weekly. Uh, Charlie, I hope I'm right in, in, uh, in reading that as uh, once every other week service but I'll answer it both ways just to make sure <laughs> now that I think about it more. Um, so typically when I'm doing service, uh, when people would ask us to do service once every other week, what that would mean realistically from a financial standpoint is that you are going to spend the same amount of time at that pool. You're not going to drive to it as frequently, 
but it's going to take you just as long to service it. You know, more, more is going wrong with that pool in that time. Um, in you know, our experience, most people, they don't cut that rate in half. They're usually going to take that rate to something like 75% or 80%. Um, in our, in, in, for our style, we decided no longer to offer that service for a few reasons. One of them being like just the logistics. Um, well, I don't, I don't want to have to lay off half of my team every time that it's winter and everybody goes to a biweekly service, you know, so as far as maintaining, you know, the, my team and keeping everybody happy, I just decided not to offer that anymore. Um, but the companies that do, it seems like they charge, you know, about 75% of the rate uh, to take it to the other possible where you're meaning, you know, how would you charge it to, for more frequent stops? Um, that is great. You know, we do that for a lot of our pools that have a high usage. It's a great way to turn a trouble pool into an easy pool by making it a twice a week pool. Um, in general, what we what we charge is basically an additional 70% of their monthly rate. Um, so it's pretty much, it's, it's similar math just going the other way. So it's a little bit cheaper than just double the rate, but it it uh, makes it makes the pools really easy to maintain. We probably have 40 or so that we do twice a week, and they just become really easy to manage when you're there that frequently. But great question, Charlie. So Robert has a question. Uh, how many services are included in your average monthly rate? Um, so Robert, the way that I operate with, with my service business is that um, we our average monthly rate is based on 48 services a week or 48 a week, 48 services per year. And that um, and that each month is going to differentiate. Uh, the reason I say 48 is because into, into my rate, I build in four weeks of vacation. So we're not going to service the week of Thanksgiving. We're not going to service the week of Christmas. Then we usually take off a week in October and a week in March. So in, in those months, they only receive three services. Um, and then in some of the other months, you know, the summer months, especially, they might receive five, five services, and we just allow it to average out that way. Um, so when, whenever I'm thinking of my average monthly rate, when I'm doing my budgeting, I, I think of four weeks. Um, if you're trying to figure it out more, more cautiously for your budgeting, you might think of like four and a quarter weeks. And you also run, as we mentioned earlier, a plus chems model. Too, correct? That's right. Um, we so have Nick, an, a, another question from Nick. When telling them the new price, should we tell them the percentage increase? Nick, that's a that's a actually a really good question. If we jump back a little bit to our our letters here, there's a lot of ways that you can talk to them about the about the rate. And realistically, like it's it's as much of an art as it is a science. There's a few different ways that you can look at it. If you're doing a twenty dollar increase, you might say that it's a, a you know X percentage of a of a rate. You know, it might be a five percent rate increase or you know whatever it is for for your market. Um, and sometimes those numbers are scary sounding. Like if you're doing a twenty percent increase, that's a scary sounding number. But something that uh, Nikki always reminds me and likes to bring up is that you can also divide it out. If you were doing something that's like a, a $20 increase, that would be a 20% increase for your business. Instead, you could call it a $5 a week increase. And $5 a week doesn't sound nearly as scary as 20% increase. So I think that a lot of it is just listening to the numbers, feeling it out, and, and seeing how you can present the same information in a way that is a little bit easier for the customer to absorb. That's a great question, though. Bryce, uh, when we were prepping for this webinar, you also told me a really great story about when you bought uh, a route and the rates were low. Can you share that story here for folks? I think it might be good good to share that. Um, I'm not sure what you're referring to from that, but just the larger company that I. Yeah, you bought a server. You bought a route, and the rates were way too low. And so you did the math and figured out that you could actually do a pretty hefty increase. And even though you lost a good portion of your customers. Yeah. Uh, or, or uh, yeah, right. go ahead. So in, in this example, um, there was a, a, a team, you know, a, a company that was not going to be able to continue, you know, the owner operator couldn't continue to do his work and he needed us to purchase him out. So 
um, you know, I, I bought his routes out, even though the, the pricing was pretty poor. His average rates were about 20% below what was the norm, which was maybe 30% below what I was used to charging. Um, and it was quite a few pools. It was probably about 180 accounts. And I remember, you know, we, we were literally looking at this same type of calculator, this same type of math when I was trying to figure out what it would what it would cost me to lose these pools. And the simple fact was when I was looking at the the current profit, the way that the pools were priced at that time, you know, I it was pretty much like a net zero. They weren't going to make it any money to our bottom line. It was all going to get paid out to the technicians and the, the chemicals and just the general other expenses. So what I realized was that by doing a pretty large price increase, you know, I think it was like a 20% price increase plus charging for chemicals that we could lose effectively. Um, I think I could have, I could have lost something like 75% of my customers and, and been totally fine. Um, and realistically, I, I, you know, I ended up losing, um, I lost 50 out of 180 pools. So, you know, we, we did lose quite a few, about 40% of our, or what is that like 30% of our customers, but we ended up so much further ahead because of it. And the reality was too, that most of the customers that canceled, they were just waiting for an excuse and they would have canceled over a 10% increase as well. So, you know, you, sometimes you have to make those decisions, decisions at what's right for the business. Um, but uh, when you guys get this calculator, I think you'll really be blown away when you're looking at these numbers right here, especially for the multi, multi-tech pool service business, you know, where your profit margin maybe isn't as high. This number can just really blow your mind with something as simple as a $10 increase. That's a great question. And yeah. great answer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to read a comment real quick uh, from anonymous attendee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which I thought was pretty good. He said, uh, or she said, if we in the industry aren't competing in a race to the bottom on pricing, we all benefit. We're charging $174.99 a month for weekly service, including chems in Scottsdale. We plan to be at $199.99 for all new clients by summer. I personally paid $199.99 a month for every other week's service without chems in Austin, Texas, all the way back in 2013, where the cost of living was lower than Arizona at the time. Prices out here are way too low, and we're so appreciative that you guys put this together and gave folks the tools and courage to make this change for their business because it affects us all. For those looking for additional encouragement, testimony on this, we raised our prices significantly, leveling across the board that averaged 25% last year, and we lost zero customers. Yeah, that's a, that's an awesome testimonial. I appreciate you, you know, reaching, reaching out even anonymously because... Um, I, at the desert pool and spa show, I think we had maybe 25 people and I'm standing up there telling them what they could do with a little price increase, what it could mean to them. And they're all, they're all just so afraid of losing their businesses. And I just, I love to see a message like that with a 25% increase, which is, you know, and, and your rates, you know, I'm, I'm here in Scottsdale too. I know that those, those rates are on the high end for what we see for a lot of people. And I, I'm absolutely love seeing your success and I hope everyone else that's reading that is seeing that too. And it gives them that, that courage that you're trying to pass to them. Thanks for that comment. Uh, let's see here. Todd Davies has a great question. How do you justify increased pricing if you're already at the top of the market cap in your area? Um, so I guess, you know, Todd, if you're if you're already at the top of the the market cap, what that would tell me in, is that you can't raise your prices because you would lose all of your customers. Um, I bet that you're you haven't reached that market cap. Maybe maybe what you're saying is that you're already the highest priced service in the area. In in which case, you know, <laughs> go ahead and raise your prices a little bit more. Every everybody else is watching you do that. All the other businesses are watching you, and they're chasing you. They're raising their rates and they're staying. They're probably staying close to your rate, but not quite as high. Um, and I, I think what you know, whatever you're doing in that area must be working really well for you. Um, as far as justifying it, I'm surely, surely that you've done things over the last year that justify you getting a raise. I'm sure that your team continues to get education. The you know every every pool you go to is additional experience that you're gathering. Um, there's a lot of things that you can use to justify 
increasing your pricing that revolve around just the experience that you're offering. Um, not only that, but if you don't increase your prices, you're probably going to be become full and you won't have room for growth. So sometimes in your situation, increasing your pricing is really about trimming those people who aren't willing to pay your rates so that you can free up room to pick up more people. You know, this is the this is the right time to do that before summer when everybody wants your service. So um, but that's a that's a great question, Todd. I, I hope I answered that for you. Um, if not, set, set another one kind of explaining what you mean there and I'll, I'll make sure I watch for it. We have a couple of folks asking what the, how can they see the price of the specific area? Um, that is a really good question. So uh, the team here at Skimmer has been discussing ways to make data available to subscribers. And, and there's a good reason behind this. We've, we've actually debated putting the averages out online. But again, what we don't want to do is for you to get a phone call from a homeowner saying, you know, uh, why are you guys publish this average? You know, I, I'm paying too much or, I'm, you know, why are you charging me this much? So it's it's really, we're, we have to be very careful with that data. Uh, we also, in looking at the data, you know, we want to make sure that there's, there's good data integrity. Uh, we want to make sure that it's accurate and we want to make it maybe even searchable uh, to look at what service rates are in, in a given zip code. So we are talking about creative ways on how that we can make that available. Um, if you think that is a great idea, yeah, we'd love to hear it. Um, again, there's sensitivity around that data and we would anonymize it, but it's something that we are absolutely looking at doing. I, I think that um, they could talk, contact support to maybe get put onto a list for that da data right now too. Is that right? Uh, Yes, I mean, the, those requests are kind of being filtered to us in the marketing team and, and trying to figure out how we package that up uh, and make that available. It might be something that uh, we have something within our dashboard after you log in that you can access if you're a Skimmer subscriber. Um, and I don't want to make any promises about when that is going to come out, but just know that it is being heavily discussed here and it is uh, something that we're very, very closely looking at. As a, as a value add to skimmer subscribers. Great. Ooh, got some more questions coming in. Yep. Where do I find, oh, so we have some questions about tags in general. Can text see tags? Yes, they can. Um, if you're worried about the, the te technician seeing tags for pricing, you could always encode it with you know code words or something of that nature as well doesn't have to be literally the rate. Yeah, we have some folks that use, I think, emojis in some cases too, um, in the customer description field or a uh, customer field that shows up on the app, which is another interesting use case that we, we did a little Instagram hack video. So if you wanted to, let's say if you wanted to send a note to your uh, tech or have your tech know that they need a text before they arrive somewhere, there is a, a field um, I think it's the customer code field that will actually show up in the route list next to the customer's name. Uh, we charge a per stop fee is another comment. When you run a transition from flat rate to plus cams, do you leave your current rate as the new labor rate and just begin charging for the chemicals on top of that? Or is there a formula you use? That's a good question. Um, I, I, Joe Barrera. I hit this one real quick. Let me answer it out of order here. Um, but someone mentioned that they charge a, a per stop fee and not a monthly rate. Their logic is getting paid for the extra stops in a, in five week months. Um, that's that's a good point, and I I definitely have thought about that. You know, collecting that extra revenue in those months where you're out to a home, you know, five times instead of four times, can obviously be pretty valuable. Uh, for my structure, I like to. I like, like I mentioned before, I like to have that vacation time built in. So it's basically instead of uh, instead of collecting extra money and then owing it to the customer, we just kind of break even at the end of the year. Um, however, the charging them for every stop that you take is a good strategy if if you tend to have a lot of customers that disappear over the winter months, you know, things like that. The majority of our customers stay with us year round. But uh, great great point there from from James. Thank you. Then jumping back to Nick, the one you brought up, 
Um, if you're switching from chemical costs included to plus chemical costs, what's the billing timing look like um, after each visit every other week or at the end of the month? Um, Nick, I still bill at the end of the month uh, with for all of my chemicals. Uh, what I actually do is I'm going to bill for all of my customers. Um, day one, they start with me. They get an invoice for, for labor for that month. And then at the end of the month, they get an invoice for labor for the for the next month plus chemicals for the previous month. So that helps me um, bill in advance for the labor and in arrears for the chemicals. Um, and just in case too, you're asking about how long it takes, it takes it takes me virtually no extra time at all to bill for chemicals since I'm I'm using the the skimmer export functions for QuickBooks right now and uh, looking forward to the skimmer billing too, which will be just as easy. Lots of questions rolling in here. Um, Joe's asking, when you transition from a flat rate to plus chemicals, do you leave your current rate as a new labor rate and begin charging for the chemicals on top of that? Or is there a formula you use? Um, so Joe, what I did previously, you know, and um, I actually, for a lot of my pools, I dropped their rates when I went to it, to a plus chemist model. I did a basically, depending on the size of the pool, like a $12 to $20 uh, rate decrease, then went to a plus chemicals model. Um, it, obviously that's gonna change quite a bit for the market you're in and you should probably look at what you're budgeting for your chemicals, but um, it, could be, it could be a pretty you know, dramatic difference from market to market. So sorry about that, not having like a specific formula. But I'd say that when you're when you're setting up a pool and you're quoting it, you probably have a formula in mind already that you're expecting to spend on your chemicals. And I would basically just back that out and charge a plus chemicals rate. Um, or if you're in a situation where it's time for a price increase now, then that's a, a great opportunity for you to do that, where you say, this is my price increase in place of in place of a price increase, we're going to charge you for chemicals. So um, hopefully that answered that question for you. Um, Francisco jump reached out and said he's about to change pricing in March and he's going to change all the customers to plus chemicals and get away from the flat rates. Um, he also wants to push to pay an advanced service. That's what we like to do too. So how do you switch these 80% of customers that pay at the end of the month? Oh, uh, Francisco, that's, that is a tough one right there. I, I've been there before too. So what he's saying is that, um, a lot of his customers are used to paying in arrears, uh, they pay at the end of the month and he wants to start to charge them at the front of the month. Um, what I've done in the past is is let them know about it, not charge any late fees. And basically they're going to get their their bill at the end of the month and their, their bill at the beginning of the month, you know, a, a day apart or something like that. And, you know, you, you communicate to them, you don't charge any late fees and you let that go for a couple of months and they'll start to pay earlier and earlier and it'll eventually catch up. Uh, you'll have a few people that you'll have to argue with and, and work on changing, but uh, all of your new customers will be in line. So over the, over the course of a year, you'll have everybody in line without anything real bad going on. But that's a, that's a good question. And that's one that just takes time to let your customers adapt to. Did you see another one that we should tackle, Nikki? We got tons of questions. There are, there are so many. Uh, I have a client that manages short-term rentals. They're wanting to give us a large sum of pools at once. How do you quote that? Should it be for each individual pool or one package for all of them? Um, can you hit the answer live on that one? Sure. I don't see it. <laughs> um, that's Maybe. that's a yeah. That's an awesome question. Um, please, uh, I've I've been to where you're where you're at before. And it, it can be really, um, really tempting to just offer a flat rate price to people. Please go and visit every pool, quote each pool separately. Um, you can offer that customer a, a discount at the end of it. You know, you can give them a, a flat rate discount across all the pools, something of that nature. But make sure you put eyes on every single one of those pools and, um, and quote them, you know, as individuals. 
it'll be sm smarter for you and you you might you know you might upset that company if if but realistically if they're upset it's because they were trying to they were trying to pull something off um, it's also really good if you're plus chemicals model for that situation because it makes the math a lot easier for you to run you can tell them you know this is how long i'll be at this pool it's going to be this rate plus chemicals so um, hopefully that helps you out don't make the same mistake that i did in my past and actually make sure you put eyes on each of those pools before you can get the get the price Uh, what is a good way to justify price increases when the public already knows your company has a huge market share? Uh, I think, uh, I guess, I guess you know what the what the public thinks is in the scope of what your market share is and things of that nature. Um, you don't really need to worry so much, I guess, about what their perception is. market share in 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 that scope as much as um, are they going to be accepting of your price increase you know can can you show that the things that you're selling are worth that value um, it's it's really easy to start to look at your competition really closely when you're trying to figure out your pricing and to get caught up in into uh, what other people think about your price increases but the easiest thing for you to to do is to just look at how the market holds when if you adjust your pricing um, what i personally do is look at my prices for quotes for service if if you have a if you keep track of your quotes and your close rate you can kind of find out how your pricing looks especially in a situation that you're in where you have the market share it's a little bit tougher for you to call your competition so what my suggestion to you basically is that if you're closing 100 percent of the quotes that you go out to you're price is too low. You know, if you close 0%, your price is too high. To kind of find that number for you that, that works best, for me personally, I like to close about 80% of my quotes. That tells me that my pricing is about right. So, um, and then, you know, adjust that pricing as you go. And if you find that you're bringing in new customers at a much higher rate than what your, what your current existing customers are, then you know that there's definitely room for you to raise your prices. Um, it's it's a it's a tough answer for you on that one, but uh, hopefully that helped a little bit, and you can utilize that to to gauge your pricing. Bryce, we have uh, time for one more question. Uh, I will cover uh, some of these at the end, especially with regards to our our skimmer billing feature. Do you want to pick one more? Um, oh, here's a good one. You, you mentioned go. late fees. What is a what is the fee structure you use for late fees? Um, so I actually I actually right now don't charge late fees. I I just have a policy that if somebody is is late for their service, then what they're going to end up getting is um, you know they're like 30 days late. We might pause service for them, and then we won't reactivate service unless they put a card on file. So my my policy isn't so much as charging the customers as much as not allowing them to um, to behave that way. Um, I've definitely seen customers, or excuse me, some of the other people in the field, they might charge like a five dollar late fee. They might charge a fifteen dollar late fee. Um, but um, I guess my mindset has always been that I'm I'm not in the business to charge late fees, but I'm also not in the business to. Um, to finance pool service for somebody. So you, you have to find that, that, you know, that, that balance. So I would say if I, if I were to start charging late fees, my goal would be just to generate a phone call. I would have a larger late fee. So that customer would call me and then I would waive the late fee and put their card on file. And, and that would be the best resolution in my mind. Um, but I think that's gonna, that's gonna differentiate quite a bit on like a geographical basis. So. Hopefully that helps. Well, there are a ton more questions and I wish we had time to get to them all, but unfortunately we are running up to time here. Uh, real quick, there are a lot of questions about, uh, are these slides gonna be available? Yes. Are we gonna send the calculator out? Yes. Uh, anyone who has registered for the webinar, whether you are a skimmer 
uh, existing skimmer customer or not will receive that as well as copies of the letters uh, that we showed you for the price increase examples that you can use um, either through a broadcast email or whatever email client you prefer to use. So we will make sure we get all of that to you. Um, next slide. The other questions we have are about skimmer billing. Uh, I am really excited to share with y'all, uh, and this was just shared in a meeting this morning, but we have onboarded our first two groups to our early access program. Uh, skimmer billing is, is live and working, uh, but it has to be turned on for your account. And so if you are interested in joining the early access program, we will be rolling those out in batches over the next few weeks with a general availability release coming uh, very, very soon. Uh, if you want to start getting in there now, you can. If you want to uh, view the FAQs and the video tutorials, we have those linked on this landing page here, the getskimmer.com slash billing. Uh, it, this is a, a pretty cool uh, feature that we're launching. You know, a lot of care was given to, you know, things like, what if I have a customer that pays me on Venmo? How do I keep track of that? You know, um, there's all kinds of really, really cool things and a ton of new reports that are coming with Skimmer Billing to help you get sharper about your business and provide more insight and transparency uh, into your business in the way of, of reports and analysis, uh, payment reminders, uh, quick invoice generation and batch invoice generation. So really looking at kind of, we, we wanted to make sure we got this right and we feel like it's in a pretty good place we, we would love your feedback. So if you want to join, we have dedicated resources to help with onboarding uh, and to help you get started and to answer any of your questions. Uh, but that should be generally available uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, we're really, really, really close. And until then, uh, the early access program folks will get it first. And for those of you who are not uh, existing Skimmer users, we would love to earn your business. You can try Skimmer risk-free for 60 days. If for whatever reason you are not satisfied, just call us or email us and we will refund your money. Uh, we have now nearly 20,000 uh, pool pros using Skimmer every day. And we uh, are always looking to make the software better and roll in uh, new features. And we've got a, a really cool, uh, mission this year to, to make sure that we can tackle uh, lots of feature additions and improvements for you all. So uh, basically, if, if, why Skimmer? It's going to help you get organized. Um, it's going to help you streamline your operations. And it's really for companies that want to grow their business. And so if, if that's you, we would love to have you on board. Jeremy loves the webinars. He's hoping we have more anytime soon. Yes, Jeremy. We have actually, there've been a lot of good ideas here too. Someone had a question about uh, service agreements, example service agreements. And this was something that we were just talking about last week. Some people love them. Some people prefer not to use them, but uh, what kind of things go into a good service agreement, you know? Um, and, and a lot of those are, are issues that seem mundane, uh, but you end up learning a, a painful lesson. For example, you know, someone goes out and breaks a retractable pool cover who's responsible. <laughs> uh, we run across those things from time to time, and I, I think that's a great idea for content. So thank you so much for that. Uh, we know you have more questions. We know you have a ton of product suggestions. Uh, we have members of our team that have been uh, logging those, and we will make sure we get those over to our product team. Uh, to those of you who are existing Skimmer customers, thank you so much for your business. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. And we hope to see you on the next one. Uh, be on the lookout for the email with all of the assets here. And uh, thank you again, Bryce, for being such a great ambassador and a power user of Skimmer and sharing your, your wealth of knowledge and expertise. Yep, definitely. And just you know, one in initial note, we are, again, we're sending out that information to your emails. And if you have additional questions, you can reach out to support. Um, I know that uh, you know we we were talking about it before. Uh, that uh, Erica and Anessa would definitely love to hear from you. They're a couple of our account managers, and they can definitely help answer some questions and you know help you guys out with some skimmer billing as well. So uh, definitely reach out. All right, thank you everybody for joining and I hope you have a great rest of your week. I'll probably stay on and type up some answers, but.
um, that'll be pretty much it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs>